is Rick Gray. Today we're going to talk about a great book written back in 1988, my senior year in high school, by Neil Rackham, and it was called Spin Selling. And SPIN is an acronym, if you haven't heard of it before. SPIN stands for Situation, Problem, Implication, and Needs Payoff. These are types of questions to ask. The entire point of the book of Spin Selling is learning how to ask questions at a skillful level, you'll have much more of an impact and a positive effect with your clients than if you try and tell them what to do. So here's my question to you. Number one, how many of you love to be told what to do? <laughs> right? Probably none of you love to be told what to do. None of us do. In fact, the book talks about that. If you're even thinking about doing something, you've considered it for a while and you're thinking about maybe I should try this out. If somebody comes along and tells you, you should probably do this, now you're less likely to do it. We are very averse to people telling us what to do. And before spin selling came out in 1988, that was kind of the traditional sales method. It was called tell and sell. Tell people what to do, features, tell them why they should do it. Benefits, right? Features and benefits. That was a really common way to sell people. There's closes, you know, the assumptive close, let's just move ahead and do this, or the alternate of choice close. Would Wednesday at five work or would Thursday afternoon be better, right? There's a lot of different old school type closes, which some of them are still effective in the right situations, but a much better way to help people and to really serve people, which by the way is the root of the word sales. The whole point of the word sales means to serve people to serve others. So if we're really good at sales, we have to be really good at asking questions and listening for the answer. So spin selling is a great place to start. Read the book Spin Selling, listen to my summary here. We're gonna talk about it in our Real Estate Super Achievers group coming up, and I think it's just a fabulous book. But the first type of question are situation questions. This seems pretty obvious. In real estate, we're trying to get a feel for the person's situation. This is why I really like doing a buyer consultation interview or a listing consultation interview before I meet somebody out at the house. I will do that. I do understand real estate is very fluid. There's nothing just like set in stone in real estate. But typically, if somebody calls me up and says, hey, I'd like to go see this house, Rick, can you meet me there in 20 minutes? I would rather not. I would rather them come to my office. I would rather sit down with them and do a buyer consult so we can actually go through a lot of different things like situation questions. Where do you live now? Do you own or do you rent? How far away do you live from your work? What's important to you about living in this part of town, right? Start getting understanding the picture. Start developing in your head what's going on in their life. These are situation questions. Do they have a family? Do they have young children? Do they like to entertain? Do they want a big yard, right? Are they in a lease? Can they get out of it early? Is there a penalty to get out of their lease, right? Find out and have an intake sheet. Most people like coaching real estate, we have a call intake sheet of some form. And then when we sit down and talk in a buyer consultation, pull out the intake sheet. And the first thing you're going to start talking about is their current situation. That's what situation questions are. That leads to the second category. And what you're looking for is the problem. Problem questions. We're trying to uncover and clarify, not solve. <laughs> this is really important. It was a big point of emphasis in the book. Don't try and solve their problem right there. That goes right into tell and sell. People don't like tell and sell. It's very, very proven that tell and sell is not effective. It's ineffective. So spin or asking questions is very effective. As soon as we start telling somebody what to do, they entrench and they're not ready and they have excuses. We could have a thousand reasons why they should do something. They've got a thousand and one excuses why they're not ready. So tell and sell, we wanna stay away from. So we ask questions to clarify the problem. If we're really good at clarifying the problem and then doing the next two, asking implication and need payoff questions, they will answer it themselves. And that's much more powerful than you trying to answer it. If you try to answer it, you, you're guessing, basically, because you don't know everything involved in their situation. And it sounds like you're telling them what to do, which we've already established people don't like. So we need to stay in the curiosity mode. Ask questions. You're looking for problems. People don't buy houses or sell houses or move unless they're trying to solve some sort of a problem. They're too far away from their work, or they're downsizing, there's too much house to take care of, or they need more room, they're pregnant with twins, and they need more than a one-bedroom condo, right? There's something they're trying to solve. So ask these kinds of questions and figure out what is the problem they're trying to solve? What are they trying to do? What are their goals? I used to ask people, what are the top three things you would like to have happen? If you could just wave your magic wand and say, Rick, if we're going to work together and you're going to sell my current house and we're going to buy a new house, here's the top three things I would like to have happen. 
And based on over 28 years of experience, I can tell you they usually revolve around three things, saving time, saving money, and saving hassle. One of those three things is usually going to be involved in what they tell you. They don't want a lot of hassle and headaches and stress. They want to make or save as much money as they possibly can, and they don't want it to take forever. They like to sell. If they're going to sell, they want to sell quickly. So saving time, money, and hassle are probably things that are going to come up during your problem questions. Problem questions lead you right into implication. The implication of not solving it. So if somebody tells me, hey, we live in a two-bedroom condo. The second bedroom is my office, and now we're pregnant with twins. We don't have any kids yet, but we got two coming. We have one bedroom and an extra bedroom that's my office. What do you think the problem is? Probably they need more room, but I'm not going to tell them that. I'm going to ask them implication kinds of questions. So if you don't move, what is your life going to look like in three years? If I just jump in and say, well, sounds like you need more room. Let's go find you a four bedroom, two bath house. It's like now they might track with me, but it's not their idea. I really want it to be their idea. So I want to draw it out of them by being really good at asking questions. And I've used this analogy with some teams that I coach and I really like it. So think about this. If you and I were driving in a car, let's say you had a cabin up in the woods somewhere and we come back after a great weekend. And on Monday, I realize I left my wallet up at the cabin and I've got to go back and get it. But when we went there on Friday night, we drove a long ways through a lot of twists and turns through the woods to get to the cabin. You were driving. So the question is, how hard is it going to be for me to find the cabin? Probably difficult, especially if I don't have GPS, right? It's going to be a lot harder for me because I was the passenger in the car. But what if you had to drive back up there? Would you have a different experience? We would all agree, yes, of course you'd have a different experience. You were driving. You were actually paying attention to where we were going. Even though I was there in the car, I wasn't having the same experience you were. That's the difference between asking questions or telling people what to do. If I'm asking you questions, I'm keeping you in the driver's seat. You're having the full experience of the emotion, which is what's going to cause you to act. It's going to cause you to make a change of some sort. As soon as I start telling you what you should do, you're now the passenger. Yes, we're still having a conversation. You're still there, but you're not having that same emotional experience. I hope that makes sense because that's a really powerful analogy. Keep them in the driver's seat by future pacing and the implication questions and asking them what's it going to be like if they don't solve this problem. Then they'll tell you what's really going to bother them instead of you guessing. And the last type of question is the needs payoff question. So what you're saying is, it sounds like we should be doing you know, X, Y, or Z and let them come up with what the solution is. That sounds like, Rick, I think we want a four bedroom house. I think we're going to need four bedrooms with these two kids coming. It's like, let them make that decision. Then I can pull up the MLS. We can start looking at four bedroom houses without me jumping in and telling them. So this is a really valuable process to follow. Spin selling. We ask situation questions to find out what their current situation is, problem questions to figure out why they're trying to make a change. Why are they moving? Why are they thinking about selling or buying? What's the problem? Isolate it and grow the problem with implication questions. What if we don't move in three years? What if we don't have this problem solved and you move for your job and six months later, you're still in this other house? What kind of problems would that cause, right? These are implication questions and the last one are needs payoff. So what do you think the solution would be? and get them to articulate and them to sell it. I love that process. If you're really good at asking questions, people feel like they've convinced themselves, and they have. You've just led the process. That's a lot better than forcing people or pressuring people with the tell and sell old school techniques of here's what you should do and here's why you should do it. People don't like that anymore and people are averse. And when people tell me they don't like sales, I know that's what they're thinking. <laughs> what they mean is they don't like being pushy, you know, used car salespeople. I get that, but that's not really skillful selling. That's old school closing, and that's what we're trying to get away from. In fact, we have gotten away from it. If you look back at 1988, it's been a long time now, Neil Rackham, he wrote Spin Selling. Read the book, do yourself a favor, learn the strategies, learn how to ask those types of questions, type them out on a piece of paper. If you have an intake sheet, when you're sitting on the phone with somebody, it's really easy to have situation questions and problem questions already written out, so you can ask them things. If you meet with people in person like I used to and do a buyer consultation, you take them through the same process. I promise you, if you get good at asking questions rather than telling and selling, you're going to have a lot more success. People are going to enjoy the interaction with you more and they're actually going to do something. 
tell and sell tends to kind of get people entrenched and they stay where they're at. They don't do anything because it's painful to move. Schools, shopping, doctors, neighborhoods. I mean, all these things come into your mind of, I don't know this stuff. And this causes me a lot of stress moving to a new area. Our clients are under stress already. We don't want to be pushy. We don't want to tell them what to do. We want to ask them questions and guide them through this process. If you really think that you're going to serve people, be an advisor. Don't be a pushy salesperson. It starts with reading Spin Selling. If you've read it, I'd love to hear your comments in the section below. If you haven't, let me know what you think of these four steps and get to work on practicing because if you get good at asking questions, your results will go way up.